What's up, everybody? Back with another Professional Picks weekly video. This time, NFL Week 9, going through all the games, start to finish. Who we like, what we think is going to happen in terms of against the spread picks and straight up. Let's get right into it. And as always, don't forget to like the video if you're enjoying it. Comment who you think is going to win, who you're taking this week. And most importantly, subscribe to the channel to get all of our great NFL content each week. Love it, Woj. Let's jump right into it. Uh, no teams were on buys in week eight, but me and Woj took our bye week. Uh, <laughs> first week of the season. Um, in week nine, we do have the Steelers and the 49ers both on bye. But we're kicking off with this Thursday night matchup with the six and two Texans heading to the now two and six Jets. Uh, Texans beat the Colts on the road in the last game. But I mean, for a game where Anthony Richardson did not look effective at all. You'd think the Texans would maybe win by a little bit more. Um, don't need to get too into it right uh, for this intro, but the Jets, they drop another one, their second one now with Devontae Adams. Um, starting to look like that window's closing fastly. We know we've seen Rodgers dig teams out of holes in the past, but, um, I mean, is he going to have the magic to do it here? So definitely – a game the Jets need to win more than the Texans. That kind of is indicative of the spread and then being at home. Do you think the Jets pull this one out at home um, on a long line now? Yeah, the, the Jets certainly have all the talent in the world on both sides of the football. So it's really not a matter of like their matchup. It's more of are they going to show up? Are they going to play effectively? Are all the pieces going to work together to get a win? You haven't seen it many times this year. And even in their wins that they have, it's against pretty poor teams. But I do think it's the time for them to win. It it, it doesn't even have to make sense because really Aaron Rodgers football doesn't ever do that. But this is a game where they're pretty desperate for a win. And I think it, their, their defense uh, especially keeps in this game. And all you got to do is get a few Aaron Rodgers plays to go his way to win a game. It just seems like it doesn't have to make sense. It's a desperation win. We see it a lot. Uh, and the NFL look no further than the Rams beating the Vikings pretty convincingly on Thursday night football. Desperation wins exist, and I think this is one of them here. Uh, and I think the easiest way to point to that is a spread that is suspicious, suspiciously close to a pick em game. Uh, that's obviously uh, not a fluke there. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it on the other videos. Hasn't really caught up to them yet, but Nico Collins still on IR. Diggs, ACL up in the year. And exactly, yeah. yeah. Diggs joins them now. So this Texans uh, receiving core is growing thinner. And, I mean, the Jets have a good secondary. So going to have to be a big game from Joe Mixon. But, I mean, got to go with Aaron Rodgers. I'm, I'm with you there. Yeah, it doesn't always have to make sense. Next up, we got the three and four Dallas Cowboys heading to Atlanta to play the now five and three Falcons. Atlanta sitting at two and a half point favorites at home. Um, considering there's almost an even matchup, some of that has to go into um, mind of the Cowboys getting into more of a must win situation. You can't fall too far behind 500 and stay in the race, especially with the Commanders and the the Eagles um, both kind of pulling ahead in that NFC East division. Um, Falcons, they look like they could also win the NFC South with the, the Bucks injuries and then really just not too much else between the Saints and the Panthers. So mm -hmm. over the Falcons all year, um, at minus two and a half, I'm going to have to go with the Falcons in this game. I mean, I've been kind of not bad mouthing, but been down on the Cowboys all year. Said they were going to have any run game. Um, they've been pretty atrocious and average. 2.9 yards per game on the ground against the Niners. And then on the flip side, for Cowboys team that really wants to pass the ball, the Falcons are top 10 in a coverage grade, according to PFF. I just think this is their chance to kind of run away with the division. Maybe they, they slip up and fall here now that they've separated themselves from the rest. But I do think the Falcons are the much better team. Yeah, and certainly the PFF overall grade would agree with you. The Falcons, surprisingly, the top – they are the fifth best overall PFF graded team, and the Cowboys are the bottom sixth, the number 28th overall. Like, really big disparity between these teams in terms of PFF grade, yet you're only seeing um, 
minus two and a half here, basically a pick em game at a neutral site. And that's because this is really a make or break game for the Cowboys. I think if they hadn't been going up against the 49ers team, that was almost even in a more desperate situation um, that you, the Cowboys might've won that game. And they started out pretty hot, but eventually uh, it was the Niners dominance that took over. It's really hard for me to pick this one because desperation game has to go for the Cowboys. Uh, I, I Again, I think the reason they lost that game last week was because the Niners were not going to go three and fives and they're getting a couple key guys back there. Uh, hard to see the Falcons. Like I can't drop a scenario where I'm seeing the Cowboys win this game. So I'm with you. I really want to take uh, the Falcons, but it's certainly a trap game. I'm going to just uh, for the record. Yeah, sure. I'll take the Falcons to win this game because um, it's hard to put any faith in this Cowboys, but very concerned about the outcome of this game. If I was a, a Falcons better here, give me a lot of points. Um, what's really going to ha- come down to is Dak Prescott. This cannot keep throwing the amount of interceptions that he's throwing. Uh, and we said that every year and it never changes. So who knows what will happen, but every now and again, we get a signature Dak Prescott performance and I, uh, in a, in a good way. And I wouldn't be surprised if that happens this game either. Yeah. I mean, the trends, not necessarily loving the Falcons in this one, but if right, if we had to take a pick here. The Falcons have looked great. There's no reason not to. It's just, you know, sometimes the, Cow- the Cowboys are going to be bringing it. That's this what one. I'm saying. I mean, we've been talking by low, sell, sell high, especially with like the Cowboys team who a lot of people regard as a good football team. Especially yeah. The past few seasons. But yeah, I don't know. I think, I think the Cowboys, it's time to kind of strip it down over there and restart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Start from scratch. But next matchup here, we got two five and three teams. Um, I mean, if I told you the Broncos were going to be five and three um, this season, would have you believed me? No, uh, Sean Payton doing a great job, but it is, and really what it is, Bo Nix doing a great job. And uh, that's what, what is more shocking to me than anything. Yeah. He's been playing I mean, great. Yeah. I mean, the spread indicates it. And I, another big part of it is, Peyton refiguring out that defense. I mean, mm-hmm. I know there's been some personnel changes, but for the most part, it's it's been a few of the key pieces for the last couple of years, and they've had their ups and downs, but when they're all clicking, like that, that Broncos defense is right there with the best of them. I, plus eight and a half on the road makes this one interesting because, yes, I do think the, the Ravens are going to win this game, but – but maybe the Broncos keep it close enough. Where where is your head at? Yeah, I kind of I think of the same thing as you are. Of course, I'm picking the Ravens to win this game, but the Broncos and you know the amount of points they've allowed this season compared to that of the Ravens is pretty drastic and stark. I think this Ravens defense, or I you know held this Ravens defense in really high regard coming into this year, and they really have been performing at the level that I I thought they would be. Can Bo Nix? You know, I don't think he's seen in the rest of this Broncos offense, they haven't seen a defense like this Ravens team, at least talent wise all, all season. We'll see if the Ravens come to play, but this eight and a half seems really rich to me. The Ravens are of our top five in in a bad way in points per game allowed here, or just points um, allowed total for the season. And so could I see Bonex doing it? Yes. But at the same time, I didn't, the Broncos' offense does not have a lot of playmakers. And Bo, Bo Nix has really been doing a great job of scrapping together what he can. It's going to be tough. I think I would take the eight and a half. I'm just talking myself through this in the last 30 seconds plus. I think I would take the eight and a half because I just don't think the Broncos' offense, again, has enough firepower. Um, a rookie quarterback on the road against this Ravens team is going to be tough. Could be one of those games where we talk about every year too. This Ravens team seems to blow out teams that um, aren't in the same stratosphere as them. Sometimes they struggle with teams that are. Um, but this seems like one, especially off a tough loss where they get it back together and and figure it out and, and, and try to stay away from being five and four in a really tough division right now. I guess not really tough, to, not really tough division, but the Steelers are really putting pressure on them a lot more than I thought they would be. Yeah, I mean. Going into this game, I I thought I could have maybe convinced myself on the Broncos, but and and like you said, I mean this this Ravens team they they do kind of find sometimes ways to lose to teams they should beat. They really do. Raiders earlier in the season as well, but but yeah, I think after a loss like that um, to the Browns, um, bottom of their division right now. Yes, Jim has played great, but. 
Yeah, I, I think they bounce back. I think they win this game pretty big. Bo Nix has overall played well, better than I thought he would um, at quarterback for the Broncos. But just generally, I don't, I don't see him making those plays like you said without the weapons against this Ravens defense. Points allowed isn't quite there, but still think they have enough playmakers at least for a guy like Bo Nix to maybe turn the ball over once or twice. And right, it just kind of seems like that's the way it's. He's due for a come to reality kind of game. But yeah, I think that'd be enough for the Ravens to cover. Yeah, I'm with you. Next up, we got the AFC match, AFC East matchup, but we got the now two and five Miami Dolphins heading to the now six and two Buffalo Bills. I mean, I thought these two teams were going to be in a race to win the division. The Jets, right there. I mean, Dolphins, Jets, not quite living up to it, and the Bills been that mainstay over the last few seasons. I, I. Gotten more dolphin stats lately and over the last few years. Just have a couple friends that are really good dolphins fans, and they just say they'll never beat the Bills. Uh, two is one in seven against the Bills, <laughs> and he's got seven TDs, 10 picks. I mean, he came back in that loss, uh, this last week to the Cardinals, but I don't know, just the Bills have been two as crypt tonight. And while he did look pretty solid, I, I have to go with the Bills minus six and a half. Um, divisional matchup, the Dolphins need it a lot more than the Bills do, but I once again kind of think they're just that much better of a team and I'm kind of starting to see a little bit disparity amongst the league. I feel like the bottom is pretty weak compared to the top half. I mean, that could easily flip in a week or two, but that's kind of where my head's at. Yeah, I was expecting more from two in the Dolphins in this last week and his return I thought they had an opportunity to beat what I think to be a little bit overhyped of a Cardinals team right now. Uh, and they let that slip. It's it's hard to base my, you know, it's hard to base this game off one game of Tua coming back because I think can easily get a lot more productivity out of like Jalen Waddle and even Tyree Kill last game. But it's the defense for the Dolphins being a bottom 10 unit right now, at least in terms of PFF grade. That is what concerns me the most in this game. Josh Allen, James Cook and this Bills offense is really firing on all cylinders right now. And I don't think this Dolphins defense is too big of a test for them. I do think uh, you're going to see a lot of points. I take the over in this game, and but I do think the Bills uh, can win this one by more than six and a half. So I'm with the Bills win and cover here. Uh, Josh Allen really, again, I say it every video, he's playing MVP football. And it's really tough with the way he's playing, especially with – uh, his legs in the ground game to stop this Bills offense. It just can get you in so many ways. And they're, you know, even without some star wide receiver power, as Amari Cooper only had one catch uh, in the second game with the Bills, you're seeing the Bills create offensive production in a lot of ways that's unique to teams in the NFL, mainly being uh, their use of James Cook and their use of Josh Allen here. And I like to keep that going in a big win here against a divisional opponent at home. I mean, that's a big thing for me. I was a little bit down on the Bills personnel roughly the last few years, but Josh Allen hasn't turned the ball over. Um, and it's the big, like, the big thing. Yeah. Like, but yeah, I mean, that's why they're right there. They're right back in the race. Like, the level he's playing at. Unreal. And I mean, not that it matters, but didn't two was concussion earlier this season was against the Bills, correct? Or am I wrong? That sounds right, but I cannot tell you for certain. I feel like just some mental aspect to that. I could be completely wrong, but yeah, like no, it's it was against the Bills. Yep. Yeah, I mean he'll bring the pressure again. I mean, Tua slid last game, so he's he's yeah, he's, he's making progress. You know, I mean, I, I hope he stays healthy. I just think some mental replay this is that took you out. But moving on, we got the the two and six Saints in this NFC South matchup going up against the one and seven Panthers. We don't have to spend a lot of time on this one. <laughs> it does sound like Derek Carr is most likely going to be playing again, so that that really says the spread here. Kind of wanted to have some idea where I I still bet on the Panthers, and I can't blame you if you do in this matchup. Saints, after blowing out their opponents in their first two games, have been terrible um losing their last six now so yeah and this kind of toss-up like do you have any real confidence in the side or is it more just you're choosing i think worse yeah i think i have confidence in the saints here to win this game with Derek Carr back i like the way even with 
uh, who, whatever quarterback's been playing. I still really like Chris Olave. I think, I think the Saints are the Saints, and they can even play mediocre football. The real thing is here: the Panthers are just awful. Uh, Bryce Young still throwing a ton of interceptions. Uh, can't get away from that. And the defense for the Panthers is just abysmal and can't stop a thing. I I think almost any team uh, can beat up with the Panthers in the NFL this year. Doesn't always happen. Who was the one game they had the win against? I'm trying to remember that now. We called it. It was the Raiders, right? I know we did call it. It was sweet. Yeah, because it was the it was the Raiders when um H- Eddie Dillon came back. We totally called that one. Um, but I don't think I mean the magic is quickly faded. Like well, with those within almost a week, uh the Andy Dalton magic faded. I think um the Saints team is simply too much offensive firepower. Not that it's a ton, but they have real weapons. You can't say that about the Panthers, who are now down Deontay Johnson too. And it just seems to be falling apart for these guys really early on. So I'm going to take the Saints, and I am going to take them to cover. I think they get back to it uh, at least a little bit against this team. Uh, that Against the Panthers, it's really, really down bad right now. As long as Derek Carr is playing, I'm yes, of course. the Saints. Right. No, yeah, and that's, that's the whole contingency. But I'm with you. I mean, I don't trust this Saints team at all. But like you said, um, between Kamara, you got Olave, and then the fact Deontay Johnson is now out and how he's really led that, that passing attack for the Panthers. I mean, I'll be honest, Bryce Young, while he did still throw two picks, he I think he looked better um, against the yeah. Broncos. And that is a good good secondary that they have in Denver. So, I mean, I could convince myself to take them, but but I, I have to – side with the Panthers if I'm just going truly off. Yeah, it's very convincing. Just being, uh, you know, a home team against a divisional opponent, you know, and one of them against an opponent that's lost six games. Yeah, you can make the argument for the Panthers here. I just think you're going to get back to seeing some of that magic the Saints had in weeks one and two. Not completely, but we, you know what they're capable of, and they're going up against about the, the weakest defense in secondary that they faced all year. So uh, certainly possible for the Saints to have another 40-plus output. Not likely, especially given the total, but it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens in that one. Next matchup, the 2-6 and six Raiders at the now 3-5 and five Bengals. Um, Raiders lost to the Chiefs and actually somewhat of a, a close game. And the Bengals pretty much got blown out to the Eagles. Pretty sure they, that was by 20 points in that one. But they're sitting still at seven and a half point favorites. And I don't have much of a stat for this one other than the Raiders have the worst coverage grade in the league. We've we've said it pretty much every video. And I I think the Bengals, they're gonna blow the Raiders out. I could be completely wrong, but I mean this team's just better than three and five in my head. I know the defense hasn't played great, but Burrow's playing well enough and I think they win this game and I just don't see Garner Minshew outdoing Joe Burrow. And the Raiders rushing attack hasn't hasn't been anything special either. So these are two kind of teams that I look at a little bit similarly, and the Bengals just being that much better of the version. Yeah, I watched that a lot of that Bengals Eagles game. And the Bengals were right there neck and neck throughout the first half and even through a lot of the first quarter, and then just kind of uh ran out of gas towards the end of it. And really because their defense uh, it just it doesn't hold up to a lot of teams in this league. Luckily, they're playing a Raiders defense that's even worse. I'm with you here. I think the the Bengals, you know, win this game. I think they win it in convincing fashion. I got a little glimpse of Aaron Rodgers when Joe Burrow talked about winning, you know, nine out of the next seven or seven, nine out of the next seven out of the next nine. Uh, kind of how Rodgers talked about running the table uh, back in the day when they need to make the playoffs. I'm not sure this Bengals defense is good enough for that to happen in totality, but certainly good enough to get a win against the really poor Raiders team this week. I'm with you. Uh, they get off the skid here and win this game again. I think double digits for sure, and you see a huge game from Burrow and Jamar Chase against, again, the worst coverage unit in football. Yeah. I mean, the spread could get dicey, but, but yeah, like you said, you know, pick them and a teaser, like, love the Bengals in this one. Mm-hmm. Moving on, we have the now 4-3 L.A. Chargers going to the now 2-6 and six Cleveland Browns. Uh, been talking about it all season. I wouldn't bet on the Browns, so they made a QB change. Uh, they finally did brought in Jameis. And they, they finally picked up that win against the Ravens. Um, Jameis looked phenomenal. I mean, he threw 
tiny yards, uh, three TVs. But what I will say about this Cleveland Browns team is I'm nervous about the rushing attack. Uh, mm -hmm. Chubb was going to look a little bit better. He's been having, I mean, it was a very serious injury, but I figured they weren't bring him back to any playing time until he was fully ready to go. He's only averaging 2.7 yards per carry. And this Chargers defense is giving up the least amount of points per game in the league. I think the Browns are going to look like the pretty pick after the show Jameis put on against the Ravens. And I don't think he's going to have that same kind of luck against uh, a stout Harbaugh-led team in the LA Chargers. So I like the Chargers minus two and a half on the road. Yeah, I really want to take the Browns here. I like the energy they came out with. And the Chargers, though, they've looked pretty good and have a solid record. They haven't really beaten anyone special. So it's really hard for me to take this game. I definitely think I'm leading the, towards the Jameis Magic and just riding the momentum that they have. Uh, it's tough. But I'm with you. Even with Nick Chubb, no matter who's at running back, they cannot get much going on the ground. Uh, it's just that there's been a little bit of a revitalization of the passing game with James last week, as we saw. But he's not going to throw for 300 yards every game. He's not going to throw for three touchdown passes every game. So it's really hard to think that that performance is replicable. And I just can't decide what I want in this game. A gut check says Browns, but I might change that throughout the week as I talk some sense to myself. But I do like how you know the Chargers are predicated on the run game. Ladd McCockney has looked really great in, in recent weeks, and their defense as a whole unit – you know, doesn't let up many points. But again, I think a lot of that's part of their schedule they've had at the start of the season. Uh, but the Browns offense, you know, I just don't think is a, is a solid offense with or without Jameis. You know, the run game especially is not going to make it easy for them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with you. I'm going to ride your opinion and take the Chargers here. I love it, Woods. Yeah. yeah, we'll see how it goes. I, look, if – if I'm just betting with what I want to see, I'm, I want the Jameis train to keep rolling. Of course. But, but yeah, I, th I think Harbaugh and their defense kind of put a stop to it this week in a, a game where they maybe caught the Ravens off guard. But the next matchup we have this is actually the Sunday night football um, game that we'll have this week. Um, so jump a little bit out of order, but we have the 4-4 four four Indianapolis Colts heading to the now 5-2 and two Minnesota Vikings. Vikings did play last Thursday, um, lost to the Rams, but a little bit of extra rest. And the Colts lost that close one to the Texans. Anthony Richardson getting a lot of flack for pulling himself out of the game, um, not really completing a lot of passes. I mean, this one's tough. Like, I feel like – I feel like the Vikings minus six and a half looks really good here. I feel like the Colts have not looked good ever since they really brought Anthony Richardson back. Um, I don't know. I want to. I want to hear what you're leaning in this one. I think I'm leaning the Vikings, but I've I've sided them the last two weeks and lost on them. So this one has me in a, a little bit of a pickle. Yeah, I think I really like the Vikings here. Uh, that makes you feel any better. Coming off, you know, a long week playing that Thursday night game, they were kind of set up for a really tough matchup there against the Rams, who were coming off a bye. Vikings were coming off an extremely physical game on Sunday against the Lions. I think it didn't bode well for them. Now they get a few, you know, much needed extra days of rest, playing a Colts team that, again, especially struggling in the passing game, completing, you know, stuff, you know, medium and short plays. Anthony Richardson can make those really long bomb throws and push the Colts offense downfield in chunk plays but he haven't seen them consistently and methodically move the ball forward, much like the bike the Vikings are able to do with their tr trio of weapons there. I think you're going to see a great performance from Justin Jefferson, which you can probably see that every game, but I think you're going to see a great performance from really everyone on this uh, Vikings receiving team, and they're going to have a bounce back game here against the Colts team that, you know, I just haven't been impressed with the offense while they have a solid offensive line like they do every year. You're not seeing – Crazy numbers from Jonathan Taylor in the past. He's kind of been able to carry the load for this offense, both in the run and even the pass game a little bit. Uh, but you're just not seeing that as much to the extent you're used to. And uh, I'm looking forward to see a Vikings team with, you know, really solid offensive output to, uh, you know, bounce back from last week. And again, having that extra rest to prepare. Yeah. No, I mean, I think you, you kind of sold me on it. I don't know what it is with being the Colts, but – but yeah, I mean, extra time on 
overall better defense, better personnel. You know, the Vikings, like we said, the Colts' relative strength is their run game. The Vikings have the third best run defense in terms of PFF grade. Uh, they've been solid in the in the secondary as well, although not anything to write home about. Um, but I just think that's where you're going to see uh, the real advantage in terms of you're going to get Anthony Richardson. If, if you can't get the run game going, he's going to be in second and third and long often. And that's just not the spot that they want to be in. And I think that's just not going to go well, given all the repetition and all the third downs he's probably going to bite himself in. Yeah, of course. He'll bring the blitz. And could get ugly quick. I'll say this. It's really hard to bring him down. I've seen some – him get out of some really crazy binds, but it's just he can't make that quick – third and eight hitch pass consistently. And that's just, you know, you can start to defend against that kind of stuff. Uh, he's, he's under 50% completion on the year. I mean, you're not going to win, win a lot of games playing like that. <laughs> but this next matchup, you have an NFC East um, game on tap here. And it is the six and two commanders heading in as three and a half point favorites on the road going to New York, who's, Playing tonight on Monday, um, so we could probably see this spread swing a little bit depending on how that game ends up playing out. But that Commanders game, being Bears fans, was a brutal way to end it. But to be completely honest, the Commanders outplayed the Bears for the yes, largest yeah, yeah. game and really deserved to win the game. So I couldn't be too upset that we did lose in the end. Uh, I mean, I, I would say the number one thing for me, I mean, they continue to impress me, first of all, but Brian Robinson, Jaden Daniels, um, Eckler, just the way they use their backs, the offense is pretty balanced, and the defense looked a lot better than what I expected. I mean, I thought this commander's defense was going to be more like Swiss cheese this year, and really, you know, Dan Quinn has just come in and put a competitive group on the field. So they're headed in as three-and-a-half-point favorites. I mean – do you see a down game here for them against a divisional rival? I mean, from what we've seen the last few weeks, I don't think you have much of a reason to take the Giants, but I don't know. Is, Gi- is Daniel Jones going to finally throw his his home game touchdown? I feel like it's only a matter of time. It it certainly is a matter of time, although it would be really funny if they've yanked him before he ever got that touchdown. <laughs> it's just like so hard because everyone is going to be betting the commanders this game, every single person. So how can I possibly take them there? Um, I, although every time I bet the Giants, I lose. These team, these two teams played in Washington earlier this year. When I bet on the Giants, I think it was the same spread at that point, and they would have won that game. The Giants would have won that game if their kicker didn't get hurt. They were the only team in the history of the NFL to score three touchdowns, allow zero touchdowns, and still lose the game in regulation. It was unreal. I think they definitely do. For a, a, a pseudo revenge game here, I think the Giants, at the very least, they are going to cover this three and a half. I guarantee it. They're going to cover. It. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make. Oh, I'm here first. All right, that's lucky. Imagine a sing- there's not a single person out there that is looking at that minus three and a half and not liking it. Three and a half in the Giants. All right, that's right. Daniel Jones. If I, if I lose this one, I just think the. Daniel Jones needs to go if they don't cover this. Mm-hmm. Don't even care what the win. Cover, I mean, keep it close. I just see Daniel Jones two passing touchdowns at home next week, bro. Yes. He's going now. He's going now. Yeah. All right, another not so great matchup. We got the the two and six Patriots. Um, they did just beat the Jets this last week with Drake May getting injured. So just a lot of interesting things going on over there. And then the Titans got blown out by the Lions. On maybe the bright side, you're going to get Will Levis back for this week, or that's the plan moving forward after that shoulder injury. So, I mean, I'll keep it short. I don't, I'm not going to watch much of the game. But <laughs> I like the, the Titans minus three at home. Uh, I think they have the better defense still. And I also just think I'll off the side with Will Levis over Jacoby Brissett. I think he's going to make a few more plays. Um, good or bad, he's just going to get the ball moving and generate a little bit more. Yeah, Jacoby Brissett's injured. I think I'm with you there. Sorry, Jacoby Brissett's playing. 
I'm definitely with you there. I mean, If it was, it was, a, it was a concussion for me, so I'm just assuming he's out. Yeah, like some guy, there was a, I mean, Jane Daniels, I mean, that wasn't a concussion. Malik Um, Neighbors missed like two and a half weeks. yeah, it's so odd how, can, like, it's just, it's so different based on teams and situations for some reason. Obviously, there's different severities, a concussion. Hey, Drake make plays. Um, I think I'm going to take the Patriots to win this game. I like the way he's looked and the way I he's will run too. the offense. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, we've seen Brissett play well as a game manager here. Uh, it's gonna be an ugly game, but if it is Brissett, a couple of backups here, give me the home team. Just I think you've seen better performance from the defense from the Titans this year, and this is an ugly game that I don't even want to make a pick out because I don't want to have to watch the game. But I'm gonna take the Titans to win this game with Brissett. The spread, I'll I'll take it on the spread too. Why not? Yeah, I'm with you though. If, if Drake It's May a tough starts, one. that that flips my opinion. That's Drake May's looked wonderful this year. It gives this team a spark they didn't have before. he's, he's a huge upgrade over Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, like the yeah, at least spark plug wise, and yeah, just ability to create plays on the offensive end. But our next game, we have the four and three Bears now coming off that tough hail mary loss to the Commanders. Um, Tyreek Stevenson apologized for his um, talking to the fans right before giving up the touchdown play. And then on the flip side, we got the four and four Cardinals who stuck out a really close one, uh, one point victory over the Dolphins. Um, <laughs> we've talked about it before, but Black Ops did come out last week. <laughs> but But no, I'll be, I, I think Kyler, from what I've seen so far, I think he's been playing a lot better than Caleb Williams. As long as he doesn't get too into Black Ops, I, I like the, I like the Cardinals here at home. Bears defense is better, but man, I just, I, the Bears were coming off of the bye week. I just, this team goes up and down. I, I don't think they're gonna bounce back too well in Arizona. At least I just, I got to side with Kyler. I know I'm, that's one player out of a whole roster, but I I think he's been a lot better than Caleb from what I've seen so far. Yeah, I'm not yeah, a big fan of this Cardinals team. Um, I don't think they're all that great, and you've got a couple last-second wins the last two weeks from them. Um, but I'm also not a huge believer in this Bears team, despite their record, especially when you saw the offensive output they were able to muster up against their really poor commander's defense. Uh, it's just so inconsistent. It's really hard to – to guess what's going to happen. And I don't think it's all Caleb Williams' fault. I think a lot of it's on the offensive play calling. But yeah, for sure. it's a I tough, mean, yeah. the fumble it's, it's a tough proposition to, to take the Bears here on the road. Um, you know, they're going to be demoralized after that last game. We'll see how they respond. And it'll be a good indicator of where this team's headed, not just this season, but in seasons forward. But I'm with you. I'm going to take the Cardinals serious. I think uh, Kyler Murray's been playing some pretty good football this year. Yeah, I saw some great catches from Trey McBride and um, Marvin Harrison Jr. James Conner has not been that efficient in the run game in terms of rushing yards per attempt, but I think he's been a you know, great help in this team, especially in the past game. So I'm going to start with the Cardinals here, and I don't think the Bears are going to put up that many points just because I they've been struggling lately, quite honestly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, the thing with me is, like like you said, they're inconsistent. They're, the Bears are undisciplined. Like, they have but like play here or there that can completely blow the game. I mean, we saw it with the, the goal line fumble, the Hail Mary at the very end. I mean, even week one when they beat the Titans, like multiple bad turnovers and just plays in general that could have easily blown the game. Uh, but yeah, so that's my reason with not going with the Bears. Yes, I think they have a better defense. I don't think they're coaching and disciplines quite there with the Cardinals, but maybe more talent on the road. But we got a really good matchup for this one as we uh, get towards the end of this video. But we got the six and one lines and in the Lambo to play the six and two Packers. Um, love appears to be doubtful for this game. So that's Not the, the plus four and a half that I think you're seeing there. Um, yeah, I know Malik Willis look good, but he's not going to be enough to pull out this one. So you're saying hey, even. You're saying yeah. even with Malik Willis at starting quarterback, the line is four and a half. It's, I mean, he's not out. They're just what okay. I read at least earlier today was that he was doubtful. But okay, that, that could change. I mean, it's it's hard to say, really. 
I'm intrigued to see where the line goes if and when he is marked out. But even if Jordan Love is playing, it's hard to take the Packers in this game with the way the Lions have looked. I mean, just a complete football team all around with legitimately every facet of the football game here. Hard to find a weakness in this team. Uh, and they've just been looking great. The one thing I'd say is you haven't had many situations where you need Jared Goff to throw that much in order to win these football games. And the one time he really has had to do against the Buccaneers and put up points himself, he hasn't. So if Jordan Love plays and they can get the game script going early and put up some points against the Lions team uh, and really have a lead in the second half, I'd be intrigued because Goff has not you know, been – terrific at quarterback now they're winning games but he only threw for 85 yards last week in that 52 point output against the titans so what happens when you need jared goff really to win games i don't think he's that guy necessarily um but the lines are so good he doesn't have to be and especially if Jordan loves playing and even if he isn't i still like the lions here to win but if loves playing and the spread is like this four and a half five number i think i'm going to take the packers spread because i just don't trust jared goff to go out and sling the football downfield and put up 300 yards passing if need be. Again, the Lions usually don't have to do that, but there's going to be times where they're going to need to call on Goff's number, and I'm not sure I can rely on him to do what he's got to do. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm completely with you. He even won conference player of the week a couple of weeks ago, won like 15 for 15, but didn't have to do anything special. Um, just passes, his open receivers, and then make the plays. But we just have a couple minutes left, a couple games left. We got the three and four Rams going to the four and four Seahawks. NFC West divisional game. Rams played last Thursday in that bounce back winner of the Vikings. So I like them here with a little extra rest on the road. Um, they're plus 100. The receivers have been getting healthy. I think the Rams are going to go on a little of a run here. Um, the Seahawks defense, secondary, we talked about earlier in the season, but they're banged up. I don't think they're quite where they – Used to be, um, but yeah. So I'm with I'm with the Rams here. I think a lot of points are gonna be scored, but I think the Rams go on a run this second. Half. Totally with you. Love the way Puka's looking. Uh, you, you get Cup in the fold a little bit more too. Uh, I like them to win this game as well. Gino's not been looking very good. Yeah, he's having a rough stretch, and I think it might continue. Even if it doesn't continue, it's not gonna be enough. I think to beat the Rams, uh, Rams go on a little run here and win two in a row with this game against the Seahawks. Yeah, we're all McVay. Um, second to last game, we got the two and six Jags going to the five and two Eagles. Um, Eagles just beat the Bengals by 20. Like you said, though, fairly close game in the first half. Um, in my opinion, I think the Eagles are going to win the NFC East. I know people are behind the commanders right now, but um, Devontae, AJ went through those injuries. They're coming back. I think they're looking like a more dominant football team. So I think, I think the Eagles start to get rolling. Like I just said with the Rams, I think the Eagles start to roll the second half of the season. I think they win the game. I don't know if they cover the plus seven, but if I had to choose, I'd probably say they'll cover plus or minus seven. Yeah, I'm with yeah, the Eagles here, both win and cover. Defense really starting to figure it out with Vic Fangio as the coordinator there. Fourth best defense overall in PFF. I think they're going to keep getting better even uh, as the season goes on and they get more familiar with this play calling. So I'm with you on both regards here for the Eagles. Well. it. Last game, our Monday Night Football matchup, and real shame because I think this could have been a good one if it weren't for some of those Bucks wide receiver injuries. Um, do you think the Bucks have any chance of staying in this one, or is this just going to be another um, Chiefs masterclass on prime time? You know, the Chiefs haven't looked great even in their wins. Uh, you know, they haven't been winning a, by a ton, but the Bucks are just so down bad that – it seems hard for me to take them even with plus nine and a half with the lack of receivers. Everyone just keeps going down for them. I'm going to take the Chiefs here, and, yeah, I'm going to stick with the master class uh, and let them keep rolling, win by double digits here. Yeah, I feel like I'm just being it's delusional so if I keep convincing myself to go against the Chiefs. I haven't the last few weeks, but I don't know. I was I was convinced they always lose one early in the season, and my, my hypothesis is false. Yeah, they just keep winning. They don't stop. And uh, they find win ways to win and they find ways. 